Hello and welcome. It's me, Persita, and this is Persita's Paradox. Thank you so much for joining me. I greatly appreciate you, your time and effort in finding the channel. If you are new to this channel, thank you so much for joining me. I greatly appreciate you. And if you are an OG, you know the rules. Thank you so much, fam, for always keeping it strong and powerful over here on The Paradox. So today, what do we want to talk about? Let's talk about our choices. Let's talk about how our choices affect our overall mental health. And what I want you to think about when you say that to yourself and you ask and propose that question to yourself, the question that we are really, really asking wholeheartedly is, do I trust myself? And you might say, well, what do you mean, Priscilla? I mean, do I trust myself? Of course I trust myself. I think our overall answer, right? Our overall initial answer will always be, of course, I trust myself. But when you really dig deep, when you really take the time to understand what I just proposed as a question, do you trust yourself? You start to recognize that you do not. You start to recognize that you find yourself thinking about things five times more than you need to. You find yourself falling into that identity of overthinking. Overthinking is a comical place because it really doesn't really exist. Meaning to think is what's natural. You're, you're always to think about something. When you overthink something, what does that actually constitute? Because if you're in a position of thinking of something, I would hope that instead of you feeling like you're overthinking, you're reevaluating things as you're going through the process. That's the key. If you're overthinking, that to me would mean that you're moving in a process to continuously evaluate as you're moving. It equates to if you're on the freeway and the initial traffic is moving at 65 miles per hour, but you start to see that it's speeding up, you think about, right, if you're going to speed up as well, but you would have to be in motion to do it. That's what I would hope your overthinking is. Typically, it is not. Typically, most people who call themselves overthinkers or who are who are identified as overthinkers aren't moving at all. And the issue becomes no decision is a decision. So instead of you actually doing anything, you do nothing, which then causes you to tell yourself that you don't trust yourself because you spend half of your identity of thought in non-movement. What I want to ask you today is what is it going to take for you to trust yourself again? What will it take for you to believe in yourself that whatever decisions you've made prior to this moment that we're having right now mean nothing? Meaning you cannot sum up your entire goal and aspirations in life among one or two or 20 decisions you've made. They've been made. You did it or you didn't do it. It was good or it was bad. Doesn't necessarily matter. What matters is what are you doing in the process of what you're learning in the decision? Catch that. You have to actually think about it, but not think about it to the position where you don't do anything because you're either worried that things are going to be as bad as you think they were or that you now won't make the right decision at all moving forward. Now, when I think about when people say to themselves like, well, you know, I don't want to do that same mistake again. Well, you've already identified you don't want to do it. So don't do it. You're well aware of what it is. You're well aware of what you did. You're well aware of what you didn't do. So don't do those things again. Instead of continuously beating yourself up for the decisions that you made, there's always going to be a cause and an effect. There's always going to be consequences to the scenario, no matter what it is, be it good or bad. But you have to believe in yourself to know that it's okay to not make a good decision as long as you don't continue to make that same bad decision. You may say, well, that's what I'm overthinking, proceed. I mean, that's the whole point. I'm overthinking that and I'm worried about making the same decision. Well, let's think about it. Let's assess. Let's figure out what we did so that we don't do that again. Anything in life is going to be mistake driven. All successes are formed by mistakes. If you're not making mistakes, there's no way for you to assess what you need to do. So do you think the people that are successful don't think about it and don't find themselves quote unquote overthinking? The difference is, is that instead of them actually waiting on things to be perfect in their mind and for their mind to reconcile all of what they've done in order to feel like they can move forward, they just do. And in the process of doing, they then think about it. 
And every time they feel like maybe this isn't the right decision, they think about it to reassess, to move forward. Again, it equates to traffic. If you're in rush hour and traffic literally is going 45 miles per hour, but all of a sudden, you know, that bottleneck scenario opens up and all of a sudden you're able to drive. Are you telling me that you're not going to just assess and think about, hmm, I should probably speed up. I'll go deeper. Let's say that the last time you sped up, you got a ticket because you were going obviously too fast and you were speeding. Has that ever stopped you from speeding again? Just being honest with yourself. Have you ever received a speeding ticket? Now for you fantastic people who have never done that, this, this question is not for you. But for the people like myself or myself who have sped and gotten caught, okay? Because we all speed, but not everybody gets caught. Did it stop you from speeding? Don't even answer it. Just think about what I just asked you. And then say to yourself, why is it that it didn't stop you from speeding? Because now every time you want to speed, you assess the situation. Do I need to speed? Am I late? Am I in a position where I'm like looking around and can see my surroundings? Do I feel froggy? Am I literally going to take that leap to go ahead and do it? Or am I just going to sit back and do the speed limit? Funny how something like that you will find yourself thinking about. You can even overthink it. But guess what you're going to do? You're typically going to end up doing the speed beyond the speed that you were doing because a speeder speeds doesn't stop you from speeding but it does make you think about it every time you want to do it it does make you identify when to speed when not to speed it does get you into a mindset of constantly thinking about it you don't then stay at 45 miles per hour because that's what it once was so you trust yourself to know that yeah i may have like done bad and gotten caught this one time but i'm going to trust myself to be able to identify and look around and pay attention to if the police are out or not why is that? Because in that situation, you feel like you can forgive yourself because you may just be running late and have to speed again. But in life, in regular day-to-day -day situations, in relationships and jobs and things that we feel like, well, oh, I'm not, I mean, not so much bigger, Priscilla. I don't know about you, but here in California, a speeding ticket is atrocious. So even to get one should make you never want to speed again. It never stops people from speeding. It does make you think about when to speed, but it doesn't stop you from speeding. I'm going to say the same thing. In life, if you have picked a, a mate or a girlfriend or a boyfriend or whatever you want to call it, and that relationship didn't work out, that doesn't mean to kick everybody to the curb. It simply means to reassess. Think about what you chose. Think about what red flags you looked past. Think about what you could have done differently and move on and trust yourself for the next. You have to be vulnerable to yourself. You have to believe that it's okay to forgive yourself to make decisions both good and bad. And you have to believe that in a constant scenario of understanding that you have to trust yourself. Who knows you better than you? You can tell anybody outside of your body, catch what I just said, anything you want to tell. You can create whatever you want to create, but only you know who you really are. So I always say to people, don't lie to yourself. Lie to anybody you want to, but do not lie to yourself. And in the exact same breath, don't not trust yourself. In order to trust anyone, you have to trust yourself. It equates to in order to love anyone, you have to love yourself. Everything in happiness starts with self. We don't want to hear that. We don't want to say that because we typically are told that, you know, we're going to get married and find our better half. No such thing. You're a whole person when you marry or when you become intimate or whatever you want to call it with someone, they're a whole person. So just imagine two solid rings laying on top of each other to create a bigger ring. It's not a half of a ring coming to a half of a ring. How do we know that? Because even in weddings, you don't see a half a ring. The tradition is not to slip on half of a ring to a person and the other person have on the other ring. Understand that it is not about that. It is about being whole. So in order to be whole, trusting yourself is everything. Even when you're making bad decisions, trust me, at some point, one of those bad decisions is going to be a great decision. And if you really are truthful to yourself, you've never made a bad decision because anything you thought was going to kill you, if you're still watching this video, you've lived through it. Therefore, wasn't a bad decision. Should have been a lesson, should have been something that you can actually 
correlate in your spirit to move and use as a catalyst to get forward, but there's no issue. So I'm going to stress today, trust yourself. Trust yourself in everything that you do, regardless of what society has told you or what others have told you or what circumstances have manifested from it. Still trust yourself to know you know what's best for you if you're paying attention to you, if you're talking to you, if you're honest with you, if you're loving you. All of those things go together. And once you have them, trusting yourself becomes so much easier. I promise it does. So as always, know that I appreciate you. Remember to like, share, and comment. Subscribe, of course. Hit the notification button. And after you do all of that business, I need you to do three things. Live life authentic. Thank you so much. I greatly appreciate you today. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye. Oh,